Hello, my name is Eric Davis, Executive Director of TV Santa Barbara, and we're here with another episode of 805 Inspires, where we take a look at some of the museums and gardens around Santa Barbara. Today, it is my pleasure to welcome in Greg Gorga of the Maritime Museum, um, a longtime friend, and welcome in, Greg. How are you doing? Great. Good to be here. So tell me, um, start with this origin story. Uh, tell me how this, you know, this is 20 years of the Santa Barbara Maritime Museum. Talk about its origins. We're, uh, we're uh, very happy to be our, our 20 year anniversary. So we're in the old Waterfront Center building. This was a WPA Works project. And as it was being built in the early 1940s, World War I broke out, or two broke out, World War II. And the city sold this building to the US Navy and it served as a Navy training center during World War II and then as a Navy reserve building into the early 90s when the city uh, decided to buy it back from the Navy. They had sold it to the Navy for $1. They bought it back for about $2.4 million uh, and then had to put $2 uh, million more in for ADA upgrades. And there was a lot of discussion as to what would be done with this building. And one of the ideas was to put in a maritime museum. And a part of the original building plan uh, was for the, it to be a small museum inside here, not quite as big as we are today. Uh, so we opened our doors in July of 2000 uh, with about 8,000 square foot of exhibit space. And um, from the very beginning, the idea was to celebrate the Santa Barbara Channel and our rich maritime history and to be very hands-on, very interactive. And we try to do that with both our uh, exhibits and our educational experiences. Yeah, I, I love the hands-on uh, experiences. You also have lectures that we, we, you know, we, we broadcast on, on our stations. Um, what is the mission of the Maritime Museum? So the mission is to uh, create uh, educational and exhibit experiences that celebrate the channel, Santa Barbara Channel and to present them to, uh, to our community uh, in an interesting way. And you've got everything in there from diving to surfboards to um, some of the old shoe mash stuff. Uh, tell us, what, what, what do you have in the museum? You know, what makes it uh, interesting for me is that we cover any human interaction with the ocean. Uh, so it, uh, it's not just a bunch of ship models and, and paintings. Uh, so we have a rich surf history here. A lot of people don't realize that Santa Barbara is seen worldwide as the birthplace of deep water commercial diving. So we are actually the West Coast home for the Historical Diving Society. We have, uh, of course, history of uh, the Chumash. We call them our first mariners uh, with the tamal. We have an example of a tamal, which uh, is very unique. You know, the Chumash, one of only two civilizations to build plank canoes, everybody else was using dugouts. And so, uh, uh, and they were remarked upon when the Spanish first came through about how maneuverable those tamals were. Uh, so that, it goes back thousands of years, our maritime history. Uh, and then, you know, of course, the early Spanish explorers. We talk a lot about hi the history of oil uh, has a big influence in our channel here. Uh, Santa Barbara, the first home, uh, the home of the first offshore oil wells, uh, the second largest natural oil and gas seeps in the world. Uh, so the Chumash were using that uh, asphaltum that was naturally seeping up uh, for a lot of their tamal, for their baskets, uh, all sorts of different uh, craft activities, things like that. Um, obviously, shipwrecks is a big part of it. We uh, have about hundreds of shipwrecks here in the channel, some major ones, uh, including the Winfield Scott, which is off Anacapa Island during the gold rush. Uh, and then, of course, military history. Santa Barbara County is the home of the second large, or the largest naval disaster during peacetime in U.S. history when seven ships crashed off Point Honda, where Vandenberg Air Base is today. Yeah, I love it. I, I've seen most of those lectures on uh, deep sea diving, the Hondo uh, crashes. Do you have that stuff online? Where can people learn more about this, especially in this kind of virtual environment? So uh, we have been fortunate to be working with TV Santa Barbara for quite a few years. So we do record all our lectures. Uh, and so those are on our website at sbmm.org. And then um, I have been doing narrated tours of the museum. So we're uh, putting those up on our website in little one to four minute uh, 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 pieces. So uh, there's more information on the website of those. Uh, and then we're starting to do some virtual online exhibits. We started with our Brooks models, which was donated to the museum before we even opened our doors by Dwight Brooks. And he was an amazing boat modeler. Uh, and we have, I think, 32 of his models 
the, uh, the detail in these are incredible and they're working models, they're radio controlled. So he has a, a submarine that you can go underwater, shoot a torpedo, uh, yeah. fire boats that squirt water. Uh, they're amazing models. So that's up on our website now too. You know, and it's interesting seeing the talk with the museums and some of the gardens uh, throughout this process. The 805 Inspires idea was brought forward to showcase, you know, how we're adapting, um, you know, in the COVID-19. Uh, how, how are you adapting at the Maritime Museum? Sure, so it has been an experience for all of us. And, and I think what the, the community should know is that uh, a lot of people look at nonprofits, there's so many in this town and think it's a very competitive um, um, environment. Uh, the arts and culture organizations countywide have been working together for years and years uh, uh, very well. And, and that's what 805 Inspires came out of that collaboration. And we've been meeting during COVID, the directors of all the museums, gardens, zoo, uh, weekly to deal with COVID-19. So obviously we closed our doors on March 13th. That was a, a sad day. Uh, I have to say my staff have been amazing during this. They have done things uh, from home. Uh, where we've had to work for quite a while. Uh, there's things on our website that I don't even know about. Uh, so we created a, a, a large online presence. We created a Santa Barbara SBMM at home page. Uh, we realized that young families are stuck at home with uh, trying to keep their children active. So the SBMM at home page has uh, lots of activities like knot tying, stories about what sailors ate in the 1830s, how to build a sailboat, how to um, make a pirate hat or a captain's hat. Um, there's videos, there's uh, the, all the lectures are on there from, that we've recorded, um, science night activities about boat, uh, buoys and navigation. Uh, and then we've been doing our lectures online. Uh, so we've been starting to do those. So we're doing those live. We did have to go online for our annual fundraiser. Um, we had a, a Cocktails and Conversation with Sean Thompson, uh, 1977 world champion. Uh, we were honoring him and the surfer, uh, surfboard uh, maker, Rennie Yader. So we were able to interview Sean online. So that's on our website as well. Uh, we did an online auction because we couldn't hold a fundraiser here at the museum. And we actually were pretty successful, not the same as if it would happen here, but uh, it did turn out really well. And then we just had last week our annual state of the ship where we talk about where the museum has been, where we want to go. Uh, and we did that in a webinar as well. So that's on our, our website too, so people can go and listen to it as well. That's amazing. That, that's really inspiring to hear, I guess, uh, 805 Inspires, how you're, you're adapting and keeping it alive. And it sounds like there's a lot of resources available for people. What's the best way for them to access those? And then also, how can we support the Maritime Museum, be it a membership or, or donation or, or you, you know, an auction? Sure. So, um, you know, going online, uh, signing up for our weekly emails and um, uh, uh, what we call our currents as at sbmm.org. We have a big Facebook presence that's really stepped up during COVID. Uh, so we're posting videos on Facebook all the time, photos, <clears throat> games, uh, quizzes, activities, even cooking recipes and, and cocktail recipes are on there. Um, and then, um, you know, supporting the museum, whether it's through membership, which is ongoing support for the museum as well. We have what we call our navigator circle of donors, which is those who give us a thousand dollars or more in un, uh, restricted uh, donations so we can use it where it's me needed most. Supporting some of the education programs we do because we will get uh, back to actively doing those education programs as soon as possible. <clears throat> and then, of course, anybody who uh, is, uh, has a connection and wants their gift to live in per perpetuity. Uh, we have what we call our flagship society, those who have us in their plan giving uh, and can make a, a, a gift to sustain the, the uh, museum for years to come. That's wonderful. So this was gonna be your 20th anniversary. What, what did you have in store for um, everybody? Uh, uh, we started off the year in January by renaming our warehouse, which uh, is great is your, is your neighbor as you know uh so that's where we store our collections and a gentleman by the name of bob keating was really responsible for getting the museum open he put all the donors and all the uh, exhibits together <clears throat> so we renamed and he used to own the chandlery here in the harbor and so we renamed that the keating collections chandlery in his honor um and then uh we had some events planned throughout the year 
Um, but mainly now we have two new exhibits uh, that we want to use to celebrate our birthday and anniversary. Um, one is called Mermaids, Visualizing the Myths and Legends. Uh, we did an exhibit with Ralph Clevenger, who used to teach at the Brooks Photography Institute uh, about a year and a half ago called Face to Face with the Great Whites. Uh, and they were his uh, photography of great white sharks. And I actually got to go on a, a five day boat trip with uh, Ralph uh, shark diving off the coast of Guadalupe Island. Uh, and when we had that exhibit, we had him here for an, a lecture, which was on Valentine's Day. And he threw in some pictures of mermaids because he thought, you know, sharks wasn't quite soft enough for Valentine's Day. And as much as people love to talk about sharks, 80% of the questions were about the mermaids after his talk. And the audience actually demanded that he do a uh, mermaids photography exhibit. So that's up now. It's ready to go. As soon as we open our doors, it includes his photography and five of his students. Uh, and then we have a new exhibit called uh, Love Letters to the Sea. We worked with art educator uh, Sandra Weiss. Uh, we've been working with her on our education programs for a couple of years. And it'll be an activity that kids can take at home, but they can write a love letter to the sea, why we need to keep our oceans clean. Uh, we'll do an activity about plastics in the ocean, why we need to keep plastic out of our ocean. Uh, but you could write a love letter to the sea about uh, caring for the whales, saving our dolphins, um, uh, all sorts of different things. So that's a, a really fun activity. Uh, our birthday is July 29th. We're gonna do a cooking contest with that. Um, and then um, uh, premiering that Brooks Models exhibit online that I just mentioned earlier is also part of our birthday celebration. So one of the things we're doing with this 805 Inspire series is uh, providing an activity that people can do at home. Can you describe uh, the activity that you have in store for everybody? Sure, so uh, Sandra is gonna demonstrate an activity that uh, we've been doing for a while here. <clears throat> she actually takes old graphs, charts from the uh, you know, naval charts or uh, ocean charts and creates an envelope. And then we, uh, we talk about the danger of plastics in our ocean. And then uh, children of all ages can write a letter about why it's important to keep our oceans clean. Uh, we've been doing this activity here for a couple of years, <clears throat> and some of those letters have actually been presented to world leaders at climate conferences, environmental conferences, by, uh, by uh, Jean-Michel Cousteau and Jack Johnson, the musician who Sandra works with. So, um, <clears throat> you know, it's important to remember that we, our ocean is our lifeline. It, you know, provides air, our oxygen for us to breathe, food for us to eat, uh, and we need to take care of it. So that's what this uh, activity is really designed to do is to remind us that we need to keep our oceans uh, clean. Well, let's go ahead and enjoy this activity at home. Hi, my name is Sandra Weiss. I'm a museum art educator and the founder of Lost Art of Love Letters. Today, we're gonna to talk to you about our new exhibit, Love Letters to the Sea at the Santa Barbara Maritime Museum. Our exhibit invites you to take pen to paper and pretend you are a voice for the ocean. What do you think the ocean needs help with? What, how can we help protect the ocean? Perhaps solutions to plastic pollution, maybe more water refill stations around town, or money for environmental education, or perhaps even more sanctuaries, marine sanctuaries. Um, so you can write letters to city councils, to school boards, to environmental organizations that are already doing the good work, or to businesses and corporations and express your ideas about how they can help protect the ocean. You can poetically and playfully express your love for the ocean and inspire others to take action too. Before I get started writing my love letters to the sea, I like to think about what it feels like to be at the ocean, what I see, what I hear, what I'm doing there, and then colorfully and with humor and heart, express it onto paper. So think about the one solution you're asking for. If it's plastic pollution, go with that and look around your house for supplies. Perhaps you have watercolors or paints and crayons. And also look around for things you can repurpose. I love taking old sailing charts and making them into envelopes. Or we have lots of brown paper bags you can use, same. Think about different ways of using humor. Um, this one's a really sweet letter with, I'm hoping I can hook you on keeping our world, especially our ocean clean, and joining the environmental cause. 
Some say there is no purpose to this, but is really one of the big issues in today's society. So humor draws people into a conversation. In today's rush, rush, rush society, it is really important to slow down and think about what's in your heart and express it onto paper and create a handmade letter or postcard that truly does have an impact and creates change for our oceans. And the letters are being delivered to decision makers and change makers and helps them, um, inspires them to help care for our oceans. You can find out more on our websites, either at the Santa Barbara Maritime Museum or at Lost Art of Love Letters. We have lesson plans online. We also have um, ways that you can create these envelopes that we spoke of, templates for that, as well as how to address the envelope and other ways to inspire you. Thank you so much for caring for our ocean. Thank you, Greg, for this uh, fascinating chat. Um, and this is another episode of Eidos Five Inspires. It sounds like um, you have a lot to offer on your web via lectures and activities. And we hope everybody will check that out. What's the uh, URL again? sbmm.org. Great. Thanks again. Be well. And I hope to see you down at the waterfront sometime soon. We hope to see you down here. Thank you. <laughs> this is Eric Davis. And I hope you enjoyed that episode of 805 Inspires.